Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, it's so good to see all of you here, whether you're new, visiting, or, or, or established member. It's so good to see you. Uh, thank God for your presence. Amen. Your presence here, your heart has contributed to what God is looking to do, has done, and will continue to do in this service. And you matter. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So, uh, I'm going to share with you a little bit, uh, won't be able to get as far as I had hoped to get. Um, pray with me, believe God with me. Uh, I'm just kind of, I got some things stirring in my heart, I'm just kind of listening and purposing, you know, just trying to discern. I, I, uh, hallelujah. So I'm going to push by faith, and I want you to pull by faith. I want you to expect answers from heaven for your life. Amen? Amen. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. So I, I want to begin talking. I'm just, you know, when I say begin talk, it's, it's a, the title is not a new title. It's one you're familiar with. Uh, but... Uh, well, first of all, let's thank God for the, for the praise team and the musicians doing such an awesome job. And for our, for our, our ushers and, and everybody engaged in serving this morning where this service is concerned. Amen. Praise God. Um, and, and, and again, concerning the praise team and the musicians, man, you guys did such an awesome job last Sunday afternoon at Greater Fellowship uh, Ministries. Uh, you, you, you help uh, in, your, in your worship, in your ministry to the Lord. You helped uh, create an atmosphere uh, that made it easy for the Spirit of God to move and express himself and for people to receive him. And, and they, they, they did experience miracles. Uh, amen. You know, one, one elder lady came up to me after the service. She said she hadn't been able to bend this hand beyond that for over a year. And she was just moving her fingers and everything like that. She, she couldn't, she said it was numb. She couldn't, she couldn't clap her hands. She couldn't cook. She, she said she can't wait to see her therapist to, tell, to show him what God did. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And, and, but, you know, miracles, the miraculous, the manifestation of God's presence and goodness should not be an now and again thing. It should be a daily thing, a common thing. Amen. God never intended us to experience anything but his goodness. So because of, of sin and death entering the world through sin and the effects it has had on this world in terms of the earth becoming under a curse, there are evil conditions and circumstances that happen in the earth that sometimes we are confronted with, sometimes we have to deal with. However, don't let the experience of it make you think it's okay or that it's supposed to be. That's not the norm God intended for us. And so it's up to us to, 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 to identify and judge every condition and circumstance in our life in the light of the word, in the light of our covenant with God. And what is consistent with the covenant promises, we embrace, we accept, we rejoice. But any condition or circumstance contrary to what God promised us in his word, we are to judge illegal, unlawful and be resistant to it. Deny it the right to lord it over us, amen? amen? Sickness and disease is not our Lord. Poverty is not our Lord. Depression is not our Lord. Jesus is our Lord, amen? amen. And he's the only somebody that we need to be saying yes to, amen? amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God. So today, I, I, um, this is not, it's, it's not a new title, but maybe I believe by the Spirit of God, we're going to hear on a deeper level some things concerning this. So I want to use as a title today, 
uh, living in the power of the blessing. Living in the power of the blessing. I don't know if you've been paying attention, but it, it seems like with me in this ministry, God has a, like a, has a wheelhouse where, you know, we're, 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 we're emphasizing faith, the blessing, the kingdom, dominion. Uh, and, and, and as we feed in one avenue for a period, uh, I, I believe we come to a place where we get as much as we can digest at that time and he flows into another area to emphasize and so forth and so on. But then, it, but then he drops back by and revisits. And, and, and the prayer is, my prayer is, is that as we revisit certain areas or certain topics, if you will, uh, it's that we can build upon what has already been previously laid or revealed to us by the Spirit of God and we're not having to start over. With that, a lot of that depends on us individually and our own time with God and our communion with God, availing ourselves to God to, to, to get further instruction on how to apply what he's showing us. Amen? Amen. So, so I, I, I want to begin to talk about this, this, this thing called the blessing, man, and how to live in the power of that the blessing actually is. The blessing of the Lord is an empowerment. Amen. It is a divine empowerment. Are you following what I'm saying? Uh, it, it empowers each believer to prosper and to excel and everything God has called them to do. Amen? Amen. So in other words, if, let's just say, for example, if you're called to be an educator, if you're in an education field or whatever field you are, prayerfully your, 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 your vocation is, is what you do at the direction of the Lord to serve his interests as opposed to just trying to dot some I's and cross some T's to qualify for a check. Are you following what I'm saying? Because if the check is the only drive behind what we do, we're not serving God, we're serving mammon. And God is not able to, to, to take advantage of the potential he's placed in us. But if in our vocation, if in our employment, if in our work, we do it as unto the Lord, then we get the benefit of God's grace to do it. And, there's, and so his grace, the blessing, if you will, provides an ease in, our, in the service we render. Are you following what I'm saying? Amen. And it, it, it serves to, to encompass each one of us uh, with a shield of his favor. Man, I hope y'all listening to me. I hope you're hearing the spirit of God and paying attention to the inward witness. I said this blessing is an empowerment on our lives from our God. And this empowerment is, is designed, it, it empowers us to prosper. What'd I say? It empowers us to prosper in the plans and purposes of God. It empowers us to prosper, to flourish, to excel in all God has called us to do. Are you understand what I'm saying? You have a heavenly divine empowerment to do your job if you do your job as unto the Lord. And this blessing puts in ease. It, it, it allows you to do what you do in the ease of the blessing. Why? Because it's not in you that you're doing it. It's not in your strength. It's not in your power. It's not in your ability that you're doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? You can work on a factory loading trucks 12 hours a day, but if you do it as unto the Lord, there'll be a grace with which to do it, and you can prosper beyond your salary. See, your salary is not what determines on how good you can live. It's your knowledge of the covenant that God made with you and your commitment to do your part. Amen. 
in the service of the Lord. Oh, glory to God. You hear what I'm saying? So now look, this blessing now, uh, it'll literally create uh, a shield or, if you will, a bubble. You remember during COVID and the NBA had the bubble? They, they had a range uh, and came up with a method to, to hopefully uh, provide a bubble, if you will, of safety and protection for the players and family so, they continue, so that they could continue playing. You got to know this blessing uh, encompasses you, if you will. It encapsules you. It provides a bubble of protection and covering for you from the evil of this world from anything that would try to obstruct you in your walk with God, oppose you in your walk with God, hinder you in your walk with God, anything that would try to keep you from fulfilling the plan of God that would come against you, it can't get at you with, because of the blessing that is on you and surrounding you. You follow what I'm saying? Uh, Job, well, Satan referred to this protection in the book of Job uh, as, a, as, a, as a hedge. You follow me? Uh, he said to God, he said, he said, Job doesn't serve you for nothing, man. You, you, treat him, you treat him so good, you give him everything he wants. You got a hedge of, 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 of protection around him. You follow me? And, and now that protection is just a byproduct of the blessing of the Lord that's on our life. It is, it is a byproduct. It is, it, is, it is the result. It is because of the blessing that that protection is there. Are you following? And as long as, we, listen to me, as long as we stay in faith. What I say? As long as we stay in agreement with God's word in terms of what we believe, what we think, what we speak, and how we act. As long as that syncs up and lines up with what God is saying, yes. your faith keeps that hedge of protection in place. But when we, when we get over into strife, the Bible says that strife allows the, the enemy to take us captive at will. Now, the only reason we get into strife is the fear of somehow or another somebody else is going to get the best of us or we're going to miss out and lose out. So I got to get mad at you because you're trying to take from me. You follow me? So fear is at the basis of the strife. So the, it's actually fear creates a gap or a break in the hedge. And the Bible says when that happens, the adder, the snake, the serpent bites. So faith keeps that blessing intact and the covering intact. Faith, I mean, fear creates a gap and a break in that hedge and allows the enemy to get at us. You follow what I'm saying? And the only, and the only reason we're giving and susceptible, susceptible to fear and giving place to fear is, is because in that moment, in that issue, in that condition, in that situation, we haven't, we haven't totally surrendered it to God. We, we're not fully, either we don't know what God has said about it and done about it, or we're not fully persuaded that it's true. Either way, that's on us to fix. Amen. Are you following what I'm saying? We fix that by just availing ourselves to the Lord through daily fellowship and communion with him according to his word, according to his word. According to his word, not how we feel, not our experiences, but his word. You follow what I'm saying? We, we cannot allow our experiences to dictate to us what the will of God is. I can't, I, 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 if I pray for somebody and they don't get healed, and I say, well, they didn't get healed, it must not have been the will of God for them to be healed. No, 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 that's a lie. It's always the will of God for us to be healed. Amen? Always. Healing always comes. Always, always comes, but it's not always received. We've got to be de deliberate and intentional to receive what the blessing yields and avails. Yes. Got to take ownership of it. So, so this blessing is an empowerment, an empowerment on our lives. It's, it's from God. It's the result of what God has declared about each of us. There's some things in that book God has said to us and concerning us, and he's made covenant with us. And, and, and the words he used to declare what he declared 
reveal to us his will, and transfer the necessary power to walk that out. Yeah. Are y'all following what I'm saying? So this blessing is the result of words declared by God concerning you. Yeah. Now, the, now the problem is a lot of times we don't know what he's declared. We don't know what he said. We don't know what our covenant entails. So in those instances, we go without the benefit of the blessing. We go without the benefit of what God intended. And then some religious person comes along and justifies it by saying, well, it's just the will of God. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Because after all, we come up with these, all this kind of stuff, well, God is in control. God is in control. No, 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 that's a faulty premise. And I ain't got time to keep going through that. So, 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 so God is sovereign, meaning he has no head. But in his sovereignty, he gave dominion to man to rule over the works of his hands, to rule over earth, thereby making us responsible for his will being done here. So the church is the one that has the place or the position of responsibility where the world is concerned, given to us by God. So it's not God that's in control. He gave us dominion, and we have the responsibility to enforce his will here. So whatever's jacked up here is not because God in control is allowing it. It's because us as the church is out of place with our authority. We are, have allowed it. Are y'all following what I'm saying? So now this blessing, <clears throat> let's, let's, let's go with the definition. Let me get that. Did I give you a definition for wealth? Okay, let's put up this because I'm going to use this term. I don't know how far we'll get today, uh, but throughout this series, I believe it'll be a series, I'm going to use this word wealth, but when you hear wealth, it, it, it some, it's kind of synonymous with rich and, and, and synonymous with prosperity. Uh, I may use those terms interchangeably as we go, um, but, but I want to start off dealing with this word wealth. And, and so, just as a simple definition, wealth refers to the resources or the considerable means, right, that, that, that we have as believers, as those in covenant with God, as the seed of Abraham. Uh, it refers to the, 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 the resources or the considerable means by which we live and prosper, but also the means by which we help others to live and prosper as well. Are you following what I'm saying? So this blessing that's on us, right? Proverbs 10 and 22 says, this blessing, it maketh us rich, right? If you study the word rich out, it has to do with accumulate. So the blessing is an empowerment that causes the goodness of God to manifest and accumulate and become more and more and greater and greater. That is a form and an aspect of wealth because it produces resources of considerable means by which we live and prosper and also help others to live and prosper. Are y'all following what I'm saying? And so now in it, there's no, so, there's, there's no, there's no toil and there's no sorrow that's part of this blessing. Are y'all following what I'm saying? So, so, so wealth then... Wealth, I may, I, I, I may have given you a, a statement similar to this, but, um, but um, if you look at Deuteronomy 8 and 18, if you will pull that up for me, Deuteronomy 8 and 18, uh, this blessing, yeah, 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 so, 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 but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he, God, that giveth thee, that's us, giveth us what? Power. Power. Gives us what? Power. Who gives us what? God, God gives us power. power to do what? To get, well. to get what? Wealth. He must want us wealthy. Yeah. Yeah. He's literally given us the power, his power. To get well. Now the name we refer to this power as is the blessing. He has blessed us and thereby empowered us to get wealth or be wealthy. Why? So that he may establish his covenant. He has, so he can establish his 
covenant. God is saying that us having wealth is necessary for his covenant to be established. Who is the covenant with? Say me. God has a covenant with me. Say that. Say God Almighty, God Almighty. Through, Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ has established a covenant with me. And this covenant, in order for the covenant to be fully realized, it necessitates I be wealthy. Are you following me? Now notice, this covenant he swore unto thy father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as it is this day. So the covenant he swore to Abraham was to Abraham and his seed, referring to Jesus Christ. And every one of us who belong to Christ, we are Abraham's seed. So we are in the lineage that he's speaking of with this covenant that he has established. Are you following me? And God is not satisfied or the covenant that he has established cannot fully be realized without empowering us to get wealth. To have considerable means and resources by which we live and prosper, but by which we bless others, help others to live and prosper. Isn't this consistent with what he said to Abraham? Yes. He, said, he said, I'm going to bless you, but I'm going to make you a blessing, right? He said, to be a blessing to who? All the families of the earth. You follow me? All the families. So the purpose of the blessing is not just our personal betterment and welfare and well-being, but the betterment of other people's lives and conditions as well. And so the key to living in the power of the blessing, having this blessing for us, is to get somebody besides us on our mind. Are you following what I'm saying? If I'm just thinking about me and my foe and I'm not studying you, then the blessing can't produce wealth on the level God intends because I'm not in a place to properly steward over it. I won't distribute it to you. I'm going to hoard it for myself. And that attitude blocks it from producing like God intends for it to produce. You got to get somebody size you on your mind. And see, it's easy to do that when you realize you're not responsible to take care of you. If you realize you don't belong to you, but you literally belong to the Lord Jesus, you are his responsibility and not your own, it's easy to take what you have and serve others with it. Because you know you're not dependent on what you have to serve yourself. God is obligated to serve you himself. Man, you better say amen. I'm preaching way better than you saying amen. amen. Glory to God. Are you following what I'm saying? <clears throat> Woo! So look. Did I have a statement to go with that? Somewhere, somewhere related to that, I think I had some kind of statement. I, yeah, I think it was that the, the, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Our wealth is a matter of covenant. Not covetousness. Not going after trying to get all you can get and get all, keep all you get. No, no. But it's a matter of covenant. And it is the byproduct of the blessing working, not us toiling. Get, take that in right there. Our wealth is a matter of covenant. It is the byproduct of the blessing working, not our toil. See, you being wealthy has nothing to do with your ability to work hard, with your ability to make good decisions. And no, no, no. It's all about the ability of God working on our lives, on our behalf, in the form of, in the package of the blessing. And it's a matter of covenant. Meaning, meaning, we have a part to play and God has a part to play. There are commandments of the covenant we are to keep and he that's our part but then there are promises of the covenant that God will fulfill as we do heed and keep our part as we do our part with what he commands he does his part with what he promised yes. 
You can't expect God to fulfill what he promised if we're not keeping what he commands. God can't keep a promise of it shall be given back to us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, if we're not keeping the command to give. Are y'all following what I'm saying? So, so God is literally with the, with the blessing, this power of the blessing is designed to take our whole life, if you will, to take it off of the trajectory of this natural realm and conventional. It's designed to put us on an entirely new trajectory that's spiritual, that's superior to this natural realm. It's designed to empower us to, to live free from any and all confinement of the curse. Hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying? Okay, so here's another statement let me give you. Uh, regardless of how bad your present conditions may be, God is with you. You got to settle that. Psalm 23 talks about, I ain't going to fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me, right? So regardless of how bad your present conditions may be, God is with you. And his presence, and you can't have his presence without the blessing. The blessing of the Lord on your life is the difference maker. The blessing of the Lord makes the difference. It's, it doesn't matter how bad your condition is. I hear people talk about, well, you know, uh, uh, I don't want to work over there, man. It's rough over there, man. Them people tripping over here, doing this kind of stuff, doing all this kind of stuff. They, they, they something over there. I don't want nothing. Listen, why do you think God anointed you? You don't need an, an, an anointing where ain't no yokes and no burdens. We are here as his anointed ones because life is rough. And with the anointing, with the blessing upon us, that empowerment, we're to help bring about the good God intended into every locale we are. Every place we are, every place we work, every place we go, we're designed as carriers of this blessing. We're designed by the power of that blessing to, to override, overrule whatever is negative and evil about that situation, about that place. Our presence there is God's uh, means of overriding the evil with his good yeah. by the power of the blessing. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, 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 so, so let me, let me, let me, let me give you, let me, let me, Okay. So two things I want to say about the blessing. Additional things, rather, that I want to say about the blessing. Uh, the blessing, then, uh, we can say is an empowerment that overrides the curse in our lives. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Say that with me. Say the blessing of the Lord, the of the Lord. Overrides, the curse overrides the curse in my life. In my life. See, the curse might be here in the earth, but it don't have to be in my life. Yes. Just because I'm in, I encountered the curse don't mean I have to be defeated by the curse because the blessing of the Lord is an empowerment that overrides it so that I can live free of its effects in my life. Yes. And an example where you can see that, you don't have to turn there, but go read Genesis 26 when God told Isaac, don't go to Egypt like your father did. Stay right here in this land, in the middle of the famine, right here. And he said this, and I'm going to be with you, and I'm going to bless you. Yeah. That's the presence of God. That's the blessing of God. And it's the blessing of God that makes the difference. It's, he's the difference maker. And so what happened? He sowed in, the, in that land during a famine and in the same year reaped a hundredfold, the maximum return, during conditions that where it was impossible to get a harvest in. What made the difference? The blessing. The blessing is the difference maker, right? The presence of God, the blessing is the difference maker, right? It is an empowerment that overrides the curse. You follow me? And so even as he began to dig 
wells, to uncover the wells that his father had dug a generation before. Every time he found water, they wanted to push him out, push him out, push him out. And finally, they ran him all the way out. He got too great for them to control. He made, he made them afraid. But the Bible says that here they come trotting after him, wanting to make a covenant with him because we see that the Lord is with you. Well, what happened for them to see that the Lord is with them? The Jewish Hamas says everywhere that he found water, once they pushed him out, the, the wells dried up. They thought that the, that the famine was over because he was finding water. It wasn't over. It had been overridden by the blessing on his life. And when he had been driven out the land, the, there was nothing, there was nothing left to keep the curse and its effects at bay. Are you following what I'm saying? So they realize, no, it was him. It was because the Lord is with him. That's why we had that water. Let's go get him and make a covenant with him. Why? Their hope was they wanted to get in on that, that covenant. Through the covenant, they wanted to partake of the blessing that he was carrying. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Glory to God. That's why, that's why God has us to sow into other people's lives, into other ministries and other anointings, that through that sowing, that covenant act of love and service and honor, we connect with a greater anointing than our own, and we partake of a grace that God has made available. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. You better hear what I'm saying. Thank you, Jesus. So then, so then, Another thing I want to say about the blessing is that it is an anointing by which divine favor flows. An anointing by which divine favor flows. Proof of that is in Esther, uh, what is it, Esther, I think I've written down somewhere, 4, chapter 4, you know, when uh, her, her uncle was trying to get her to go see the king. Now, you can't go to the king like talking about, you had to be summons you had to be invited you couldn't just show up unannounced king could have you have you uh killed put to death and she didn't have uh an, an, an appointment with the king and her uncle was trying to tell her hey it, it is for such a time as this that you're here in the king and so she appeared before the king and was given favor she was given an audience and as a result her people were saved it's an anointing by which divine favor flows. God will divinely influence somebody else in a position of means to do you a favor, to serve your interest. They won't know why they're doing what they're doing to serve you. They're just under a greater influence. They're under that blessing. Are you understand what I'm saying? Matter of fact, you can expect banks and lending agencies to contact you, write you, notify you uh, about different deals and, 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 and advantages uh, for you financially that's going to make things better and better and better and better. Why? Because of this favor, because of this blessing, because of this divine influence upon the hearts and minds of others. Now, that's not going to happen just because it's what God wants to happen and what we want to happen. No, the, 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 oh, the favor and the prosperity is tied to us fulfilling our kingdom purposes and assignment. I think I got a statement, something like that up there, Donald, somewhere. I think it's somewhere in my notes. If not, here it is. Just, just, just remember this. The, the, the pros yeah, th there you go. Thank you, man. The prosperity that the blessing yields is tied to the kingdom purposes, which would be our vision, that God has assigned you to. Now, if he's planted you in this church, he has assigned you and connected you to a vision, to a kingdom purpose. And as we do our part in support of that kingdom purpose and the fulfillment of that vision, the empowerment that the blessing is, is allowed to work and produce the good you need to do your part, plus enjoy good beyond what you could do without doing your part. Amen. Amen. Are you following me? Glory to God. So, so, so these two things uh, said, uh, overrides the curse, and it's, it's an anointing by which divine favor flows. Uh, <clears throat> why, 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 I believe that, that the emphasis on this right now is because 
Um, we have a, a, a dominion mandate, according to Genesis 21. Excuse me, Genesis 1 and, and 26 through 28. Uh, he's given, he gave Adam dominion, where he intended for the entire family of man to have dominion, right? To exercise authority in the earth so that his will be done here, right? That's, that's the basis of the, so we have a mandate as the body of Christ, as believers in Christ Jesus to exercise dominion even on this side of the cross. You follow me? <sighs> but that dominion means we are to rule and reign. That means, in other words, we, every aspect of our life is subject to the words we say. So that means I have something to say about every area of my life. Uh -huh. What do I have to say about it? What God said about it. Amen. If I'm saying something about it other than what God said about it, I'm canceling out what God said about it. But if I say about it what God said about it, I'm enforcing what God said about it. Yes. Amen. You follow me? So God means for us to have dominion over every area of our life. He desires the body of Christ to have dominion in the financial realm. And we can't exercise dominion in the financial realm if we broke and in debt. Yeah. So, hence, the mandate, Todd, lead these people into a debt-free life of abundance. Yeah. Now, that's as much a mandate as have dominion. Yeah. Well, we need the power that the blessing is to get us there. Because God is not intended that we toil to get there. He's not intended that we take seven years to get there. Are you following what I'm saying? Now I got another statement somewhere along those lines. I think it says, uh, 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 what did it say? Something about favor and labor. A moment of favor outweighs a lifetime of labor. You see that? You, you, you and I cannot labor hard enough, long enough to enjoy the life God intends for us. But favor, a moment of favor, can outweigh and outdo a lifetime of labor. So God intends for the blessing and the power that is, the favor it produces, to get us to this place he wants us to be quickly. Quickly. Not toiling over years. Glory to God. Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, Jesus, help me, Lord. So, 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 okay. So, so let's go. We, we, we looked at Deuteronomy 8, right? Let's go back to Deuteronomy 8 and, 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 and 18. Back to Deuteronomy 8 and 18. And I'm, I'm just going to kind of uh, wrap it up right here. Uh, when I say here, not this verse, but here in this next few minutes. Uh, <laughs> verse 18, now remember, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Now, the wealth is necessary for the covenant God established with us to be fully realized in our life. And remember what we said about wealth. It, it is resources. It has to do with resources of considerable means whereby we live and prosper and whereby we help others live and prosper, right? It is money. De definitely it is money. It includes money, but it is not limited to money. It, in it, it, it includes means and resources to make every area of our life better, money being a part of it. But it is tied to, it's a matter of covenant, meaning we prosper and enjoy wealth to the degree that we're faithful to keep the commands of our covenant. Yes. So let's back up to verse 6. And we're going to work our way through this and look at this wealth thing and what it is. So verse 6, uh, Deuteronomy 8 and 6, Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments, say commandments, commandments. of the Lord thy God, right? Yes. We could say, therefore thou shalt keep the covenant of the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to fear or reverence him. You shall keep the covenant of the Lord thy God. To walk in his ways was to do what he say and have him keep his word to you. And to fear him, reverence him, right? Yeah. So when you see commandments, think covenant, right? 
Our part of the covenant is to obey the commandments. God's part of the covenant is to fulfill the promise tied to the commandments. Got it? Verse 7. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land. Say good land. Good land. A land of brooks, of water, of fountains, and, and, and depths that spring out of valleys and hills. Next verse. A land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates. A land of oil, olive, and honey. Next verse. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. A land that shalt, thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills mayest thou dig brass. Now hold that right there. We're talking about a good land, right? A, a land got all that in it. It's a good land. And he's bringing us into that land. Correction. He has brought us into that land. That good land for us is not a geographical location. That good land for us is our citizenship in the kingdom of God. And, and it, it, that good land is the reality of God's promises being fulfilled in our lives. So God's promise himself took my infirmities and bore my sickness and disease, right? When that's fulfilled in my life, that, that's my good land. When that's my reality, that's that good land. That's what he's speaking of when he says wealth. He's, re he's referring to a good land because the good land is rich and fertile and allows for a good life to be enjoyed. You follow me? And that's why we're in the kingdom to get the good life afforded us in the kingdom. And the thing that makes us a good life is his promises to us are fulfilled and brought to fruition. Come on, man. You follow me? Go, verse 10. When thou hast eaten, when thou hast eaten. Now, wait a minute. Go back to verse. Go back. Go back to verse 9. Let me go back to verse 9. Verse 9, please go back. So look here. I just want to point this out again. This blessing is designed to produce a reality where there is no scarceness. You eat bread without scarceness. You, you, you don't lack anything in it. What does that mean to eat without scarceness? Oh, on one hand, that means you go up in the, in the restaurant and look at what you want without looking at how much it costs. You go up on the, in the car dealership and look at what you want, what you want, not what you think you can afford. You go get a house that you like, not what you think you can afford. Are you following what I'm saying? You're, you're, you're in a position to distribute and dispense goods and favors on others without lacking yourself, without going without yourself. You understand what I'm saying? My obeying God and blessing you don't make me short. It don't cause me to go without. If I empty my account in the service of the Lord, he is obligated to fill it back up before I need a dime. Okay, verse 10. When thou hast eaten and art full, 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 then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land, the good life, which he hath given thee. It's a matter of covenant. Verse 11. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. In other words, when, you, when you're full, you're nice and tight, belly all good, you know, and you're living good, you're stretched back, driving good, wearing good. Don't lose sight of who did it. Yes. Don't begin to put your trust in the goodness and stop trusting the creator. Amen. He says, beware. Now, if he's saying beware, their potential to, to, come, to come to that place is present. So beware. Watch out for it. Be on guard. Right? Forget not the Lord thy God. In not keeping his commandments. See, 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 when the covenant don't, is not important to you anymore, no when obeying what God says is not important to you anymore, no then in our hearts and in our minds, we've disconnected serving God to the good we have. And that disconnect is going to cost us the goods because it opens the door to the enemy to come in and attack. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in, keeping, in not keeping his commandment. Keep the covenant and his judgments, his statutes, which I command thee this day. Next verse. 
lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses. Yes. Plural. Plural. God never intended us to struggle with a 30-year mortgage on one house. And by half time you get things paid, you, you, you ain't well enough to enjoy it. No, that's not the will of God, man. Yeah, go. Goodly houses, right? And dwelt therein, next verse, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, yeah, yeah. and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, yeah. you don't just have some silver and gold, it's multiplied. It's all in the land he brought you into. Yeah, yeah. See, it's one thing to possess your inheritance and experience his prom promises of God being fulfilled. It's another thing to have the fulfillment of that exceed what you can ask, think, or imagine. Yeah. Hmm. Glory to God, right? Hmm. And all that thou hast is multiplied. How you get it to multiply? Yield it to God. When you acknowledge I'm not my own, but I, I'm yielded to you, Lord. When everything in my hand is, I yield everything in my hand to serve you as you say. Yeah. He can take what's in your hand and multiply it. Yeah. Silver and gold is multiplied and all thou hast is multiplied. Next verse. Then thine heart be lifted up and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Next verse who led thee through the great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, where there was no water, and brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint. Man, God did miracles to provide for us, to supply for us. Yeah. And, and we get a little something, and, 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 and we got the nerve to forget. How does that happen? A a prayerless life, for one thing, a life in which you have no prayer life. That's, it, you're easy to forget if you ain't got no prayer life. Come on, come on. If you're not expressing gratitude to God and thanking him for his goodness, you're going to forget it. Because the enemy will see to it that you forget it. He'll, he'll get up in your ear and whisper some lies. And say, no, I did that. Look what I did. Man, I got it going on. I'm all this, I'm all that. No. No, that very breath we're breathing is because of God allowed it. God ordained it. Who fed thee in the wilderness which with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee or prove thee, right? That he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. Now, what does that mean? In other words, in other words, there were other routes, other directions they could have taken from Egypt to the promised land. But he brought them through the wilderness on purpose because by going that route, there was nothing along the way that they could put their trust in but him. So if God can, can help us to realize, I need you. If I know I need God when I have nothing, and I depend on him and trust him when I have nothing. It's easier to trust him as he blesses me with something. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? To do thee good at the latter. Okay, next verse. And thou say in thy heart, my power and the might of my hand had gotten me this wealth. See, the wealth is referring to the good land, the goodness of God, Right? They, they, they were in the wilderness 40 years. And the goodness of God, the blessing of God was such that their feet didn't swell. The clothes didn't get holes in them. He supernaturally sustained their clothing and their health. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? That's the blessing. That's the aspect of wealth. You follow me? Are y'all hear what I'm saying? God kept you through COVID. That's wealth. That's the blessing. You follow what I'm saying? And I'll say in my heart, my power and might of my hand have got me this wealth. Verse 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. Be intentional. Be mindful. 
to remember that God is who gives me the power to get wealth, the means, the ability. This blessing on me is the means whereby I get wealth, obtain wealth, have wealth. Why? That he may establish his covenant. That what he swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob could be realized in my life yeah. today. Today, this day moving forward. You follow what I'm saying? Now, I'm going to end with this. I'm going to end with this. I'm going to close with this. And, man, you're going to need your faith to receive this. You're going to need to use your faith to receive this. this. This ain't for little boys and little girls. You need your big boy britches on, your big girl britches on. Yeah. Amen. Look, look, look at, at, at Luke 9. Did I give you Luke 9, 20-something? Luke 9, maybe verse 23 or 16, somewhere, some, something in Luke 9. Let me see if I find it in my notes. It, look, look at Luke 9, verse 16 in the New Living Translation. I, don't, I may not have given you that. Huh? Luke 9. Did I give you Luke 6? Let me see it. I don't think that's what I want, but let me see it. It might be. I'm looking at another verse. Y'all see, I have to discern in, in my, what, what I write. Uh, no, 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 ma'am, not that one. I, 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 give, me, give me Luke 9, verse 16. That's what I did. I reversed the, the 9 and the 6. Give me Luke. Yeah, that's it. Now, now you ready to use your faith? Jesus took the five loaves and, and two fish, looked up toward heaven, and blessed them. Now, y'all know what this situation is, right? This is where he was out there feed, preaching to the people. He said, where can we buy some food to feed them? They start tripping about what we ain't got, how much it is, this, that, and the third, right? And so this little boy, this little boy had a lunch and had two small pieces of fish and five loaves of bread and brought it to the disciples and the disciples took it to Jesus and said, well, what is this among so many? And never, ever, ever, ever make light of your seed. Yes. Never make light of what you have as your means to serve God. It might not be as much as somebody else. But if it's what you got, see, it's accepted because of the willingness of heart in which it's given, not how much. Right? Now, look at this. He took the five loaves, the two fish, looked up toward heaven, and blessed. <coughs> blessed them. What did he do to the fish and the bread? Blessed them. How did he bless them? By speaking words. By giving thanksgiving. Yes. Then, after blessing them, he takes the same five pieces of bread and two small fish, breaking the loaves into pieces. He kept giving. Kept giving the bread. Why did he keep giving? Because it kept being multiplied. It didn't run out. It kept multiplying. He kept giving the bread and the fish to the disciples so they could distribute it to the people. And we're talking 5,000 men, not counting women and children, who were commanded to sit down in groups of 50 and groups of 100. And the fish and the bread was distributed to them who sat down. So some refer to this as the miracle of the loaves and the fish, where this insufficient amount of five pieces of bread and two small fish, after being blessed, was multiplied to be more than enough to meet the need to, for 5,000 plus to be well fed. Not just get a little something, but eat all they could eat and, and, and well fed. You follow me? Now just hold it there for a moment. Here's what you want to use your faith. The other night, man, the Lord woke me up at, at about 3 o'clock. And I went downstairs and I was I had this blessing stirring in me, and I just got down there and started writing, and I was writing and writing, 
And then I was impressed. I was just impressed of the Lord to see if I could find something about the blessing uh, on YouTube. Man, by this time, it's about, it about, it about 4 o'clock in the morning. I go to YouTube, flipping through different things coming up about the blessing. And I came across a service about the blessing of, of Abraham, the blessing of the Lord. Clicked on it. And when I, it started, the man of God, yeah, use your faith. The man of God was in the process of saying this. He said, this day in your lives begins the miracles of the loaves and the fish. It came right on in that spot. And that thing just ministered to me. And I was like, wow. I said, okay, Lord, what you saying? What does that mean? Did, now, now, now notice what, what happened, how he got to that, right? A little boy gave up his lunch. Say he sold a seed. So in giving up his lunch, he was serving a greater purpose than his own, right? He was serving the purpose of the kingdom because he was serving Jesus. Jesus wanted to feed the people. Yes. And he contributed to Jesus being able to do the will of the Father with his seed. Yes. Your prosperity is tied to the kingdom purpose God assigned you to. When you yield your supply to the Lord for his services, he can take your supply, multiply, do what he wants done, then give it back to you beyond what you could think, hope, or imagine, more than what you started with to begin. What do you think they did with all the 12 basketfuls of fish and bread they took up with? They gave it back to the boy. That was his harvest. So I said, Lord, what you saying? This is what he ministered to me. He said, for those whose heart are needed to mine, for those who favor my righteous cause and put my interests ahead of the, for those who are faithful to serve me and what I provided, there will be an unending supernatural supply of my provision beginning today. Now, I receive it, but there's a whole lot of conditions to that. And I think that the thing you want to pay attention to is your heart being knitted to his. It's got to be synced up to his. It's got to be yielded and surrendered to him. It's got to be about putting his interest in his agenda ahead of ours. And to the end that we are willing to do that, we can expect a supernatural supply of his provision in our life. He'll take what we give him and yield to him, multiply it to meet the need he's assigned us to, but then, but then give it back to us more than what it was to start with. Yeah. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Yeah. That's 2 Corinthians 9, uh, and nine and ten, he what is he ministered no ten and 11. he ministered seed to the soul, and bread for your food, and then he takes the seed you sow in serving him and multiplies it, he multiplies it back to you why so that you he increases your, your the fruits of your righteousness or your resources for being even a greater blessing. Yeah. Are you one? You follow what I'm saying? So 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 in other words, in other words. If you've honored God with what you have and you got $2.50 left in your account, he can supernaturally multiply that $2.50 to do whatever needs to be done in your life, to meet whatever demands, to cover whatever expenses, to pay whatever bills. Why? Because, see, see it's not of this world. It's, it's the blessing. Say it's the blessing. Say this, the blessing, the blessing. Is, supernatural. is supernatural. It's beyond anything I can do in me. You follow me? Yeah, yeah. It's 
is God's manifest presence on your life. Amen? Amen. Okay, thank you for your patience. I'm going to stop right there. Let's stand to our feet. Glory to God. I pray you receive uh, by the Spirit of God and the Word of God today. I encourage you to prayerfully seek God further outside of this service and avail yourself and position your heart for more un insight and understanding. Uh, because whatever we have received, even in this, this session, there's, there's so much more that God said we didn't get yet. You, you might wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning like, bam, the Lord said that in that service. Or it might be 2 o'clock tomorrow. Like, wait a minute, that's what that means. And, and, and see, these things come to us or reveal to us because of the heart that, if your heart is needed to God. In other words, if you got God's agenda on your mind other than your own, right? Because he, he, the Bible says he, he, he delights in the prosperity of those in his service, right? Yeah. Who favor his righteous cause. Who favor his cause above our own. He delights in their prosperity. You follow? Father, we thank you today for your word, for the unfolding of your word, for the edification that has come because of your word, the strengthening and the refreshing that is from your word and your spirit, the enlightenment, the understanding, the dismantling of lies, the uprooting of things you've not planted, Lord, the, the power and influence of Satan being broken and removed today. We thank you for the freedom today, the healing today, the restoration of our souls today, of our affairs today. We thank you for loving us and showing us your salvation today. And we take great joy and delight, Father, in living by your word and following you, Lord, following your voice and your voice only in the name of Jesus. Now, if there's anybody here and you're not yet sure about your standing with God, you're not sure of your salvation, it's one thing to believe on Jesus, even the devils believe, but have you received? him as your Lord and your Savior. That's the difference maker. And if you're those here that have not, you're not certain about that, then it would be our pleasure and our honor to minister to you uh, at, at, after this service and at this altar or, or in anything else that, that you won't pray for. But otherwise, Father, I commit this congregation to your care, to your safekeeping, to your watchful eye, Lord, to show each one of us your salvation. And I bless them, Father. I release your blessing upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. Enjoy your day.